Hey, welcome to Simply Psych EDU Rapid Review. I'm Michael Ingram. Today we're talking about selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, specifically the mechanism of action of SSRIs. Before we get started, let's do a quick review of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So all SSRIs are potent inhibitors of the serotonin transporter. Remember the serotonin transporter uh, basically whisks in serotonin from the outside. Serotonin transporters uh, facilitate the removal of serotonin from the synapse, uh, like I said, by whisking it up into the presynaptic neuron. Serotonin transporters are located at both the nerve terminal, which is at the end of the neuron, as well as at the cell body region, which is called the somatodendritic or soma body dendritic, the dendrites. Uh, the somatodendritic region of serotonin neurons. So the, so the serotonin transporters are located at both sides of the neurons. All SSRIs, they have sexual side effects. Paroxetine seems to have the highest rate of sexual side effects compared to the others, and sertraline has a lower rate of sexual side effects compared to the others, and many think that this is because of the dopaminergic properties that you see with serotonin at higher concentrations or at higher doses, I'm sorry. So all SSRIs carry a small risk for bleeding. Remember that serotonin receptors are found on platelets. All serotonin reuptake inhibitors uh, typically take two to six weeks or sometimes longer before you see a therapeutic effect. Okay, so all SSRIs with the exception of fluoxetine may cause a discontinuation syndrome. This is because of fluoxetine um, has an active metabolite, norfluoxetine, which has a half-life of up to two weeks. Uh, by the way, the parent compound, fluoxetine, only has a half-life, well, it's not only, but it has a, has a half-life of about two to three days. Uh, paroxetine does not have a half, uh, an active metabolite, and so uh, you'll see uh, discontinuation syndrome if you uh, stop this abruptly. Uh, the chronic administration of all SSRIs, particularly fluoxetine and paroxetine, um, increases their half-life considerably as they inhibit their own metabolism. Um, in general, but not always, higher doses of SSRIs are needed to target obsessive compulsive disorder and other anxiety disorders compared to the doses that we would use for depression. Uh, women tend to have a more favor favorable response to SSRIs, although there's not a lot of clinical evidence to support that. Um, that's sort of anecdotal evidence. Um, increasing the dose of an SSRI too quickly may cause um, some initial symptoms like restlessness, anxiety, tremors, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, irritability. Remember that serotonin is not just in the brain. The majority of the serotonin in the body is located um, outside the brain, actually in the gut and on platelets. Uh, when using SSRIs in individuals with anxiety, typically you want to start at a lower dose than you would for somebody uh, with depression. Okay, so this is just a table um, outlining the different selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Uh, the initial dose we usually use, and the daily range, um, along with some comments about each one uh, for your review. Okay, so these diagrams, uh, which I'm going to show you, are going to basically illustrate the uh, mechanism of action or the theoretical mechanism of action of serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors. Uh, this was adapted from Stahl's textbook. I, uh, I, I highly recommend you pick up his book and read it. Um, he's got great diagrams. Uh, makes it a lot easier to understand. So essentially here you can see we have the uh, presynaptic, let me get my pen out here, we got the presynaptic uh, serotonin neuron, so its cell bodies sit in the Rafe nucleus, so then you have the postsynaptic neuron here uh, for you know, wherever the uh, serotonin is projecting to. So basically uh, the serotonin transporters, like I said before, they sit both on the end of the neuron, as well as on the cell body or the dendrites, what we call the somatodendritic region of the neuron. And they're responsible for taking in serotonin. So you can see that there's serotonin here and serotonin here, and it's just basically bringing in the serotonin that was released. So this is a neuron here, right? Impulse flow is going this way, right? Once it gets to the end, then it releases serotonin out into the synapse, Serotonin then is taken back up either by the CERT um, or it's uh, diffused away or there's um, enzymes within the 
uh, within the synapse itself that metabolize them, and that's how you get rid of it, so that way you can have another uh, synapse. So now you see that serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitor right here has been added. Okay, so this is what happens. So the serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor uh, essentially blocks the serotonin transporter. Now you have an accumulation of serotonin. It just so happens uh, that there's a greater accumulation of serotonin at the somatodendritic region than the uh, nerve terminal region. And essentially uh, what happens is serotonin begins to accumulate. And once it begins to accumulate, then it starts acting on this receptor right here, which is the 5-HT1A receptor. All right, now 5-HT1A receptors, all you need to remember, that, uh, whatever that was, holy shit, okay. Anyway, so the 5-HT1A receptor uh, is a autoreceptor. What an autoreceptor does um, is it sits, any, uh, so basically an autoreceptor is any sort of receptor that sits on the neuron uh, that makes the neurotransmitter for that receptor. Okay, so for example, a serotonin uh, receptor on a serotonin neuron would be considered an autoreceptor. Uh, the 5-HT1A receptor, what it does is it, it's sort of like the, um, like the highway patrol, if you will, of the neuron. What it does is it says, okay, if there's a lot of serotonin around, it says, okay, 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 there's way too much serotonin going on here. We need, to, we need to calm this down a little bit. And what it does is it inhibits the serotonin neuron. So essentially it's a feedback mechanism. It's a negative feedback mechanism. Okay, so as the serotonin accumulates, it starts acting on the 5-HT1A receptor. And what that does initially is what? Well, it decreases neuronal impulse flow because you're now inhibiting the serotonin neuron. But over time, Remember that receptors don't like to be disturbed. And when they're disturbed, what they do is they say, well, screw you, I'm gonna do the opposite. So if you're, if you're constantly stimulating the 5-HT1A receptor, it's like, okay, that's enough stimulation. I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm leaving them out, right? So it starts to internalize, all right? And so what you get is a less serotonin uh, receptors, 5-HT1A receptors on the somatodigitic region. So what that does is it then increases the impulse flow because you have less, less inhibition of the serotonin neuron. Unfortunately, once you start having more impulse flow, then you have more serotonin, right? And the more serotonin you have, the more serotonin is gonna start binding to the 5-HT2A and 5-HT2C receptors. And this is what we think causes that initial anxiety, jitteriness, nausea, a sexual dysfunction uh, that you see with um, the initiation of SSRI antidepressants. Now, over time, uh, what ends up happening is those those receptors that were causing the um, that were causing those side effects, they just like the 5-HT1A receptor, they start down regulating, all right, and they start they start leaving, or they go they are, they're internalized, and, that, and basically what this means is that that as these receptors are internalized, you're getting less of them, and that is thought to, to correlate with the antidepressant response. Interestingly, in patients who are depressed they already have an upregulation of the 5-HT2A receptor. In other words, they have way more 5-HT2A receptors than people who are not depressed. And so if we can, if we can constantly stimulate this, then if we can get it to, to downregulate, then we see the antidepressant response. I hope this was helpful. Um, give me a like if you thought it was a helpful, um, uh, what the hell is this, <laughs> a helpful review. Um, and uh, I appreciate you listening in.